I started out singing, actually. I, um, I grew up singing quite a lot, um, studied a lot of classical music, and then that kind of bled into musical theatre. Um, and I fell in love with musicals and um, that was kind of like my, my window into performing arts. I was, you know, very classical, like actor with pennies left in my bank account and then sex education kind of fell in my lap. And I remember I, I took myself out for sushi and tuna tacos and some sake. Sex education was, I mean, iconic in the sense that it did represent a huge range of different kinds of people that everyone can kind of relate to. And it really does show like the common cause we have um, no matter what gender you are, race or age. Um, so for me, and it was so wonderful being a part of a set and community of actors and cast and crew and creatives where it wasn't even spoken about in that sense. It, I mean, obviously it was discussed and celebrated, but then we, it wasn't, um, you didn't walk in, I didn't particularly walk into a room and be like, oh, I'm an Indian girl, a part of this. Like I'm just another actress. Um, and hopefully to be reviewed on my talent and not for the colour of my skin. So I'm super grateful for that show in that sense. You say mean to me every day, Ruby. Your bag's fake. Your mascara's clumpy. You'll never have the right body type to get a proper thigh gap. You don't, Olivia, it's a fact. See, she's horrible. I was filming on a movie at the time and my manager texted me just saying, oh, there's a role in Bridgerton and they're quite interested in you. And that week when I got that message, I sent in a few self tapes and it just kept on rolling forward that week. It was all very, sometimes I'm quite used to these things taking a while and you're sitting by the phone, like waiting and waiting, but this happened really quickly. Are the young ladies of London truly so easily won by a pleasing smile and absolutely nothing more? So you find my smile pleasing? I find your opinion of yourself entirely too high. Sex education was in a high school in modern day. So it was easy for me to relate to a lot of things. And Bridgerton, it's 18th century, and you step on set and you're transported into this world. And the way you hold yourself, the way you speak, different mannerisms, cultural references, like what would be allowed then, what wouldn't be as a lady. Um, that's all been really exciting to kind of sink my teeth into. Sometimes me and Malik don't even use a condom. He just pulls out. I thought that if something went wrong, I was just going to get the morning after pill. That's okay, right? Yeah, that's okay. No, that's not okay. Season three of Sex Education just came out. So there's some really lovable fans, huge fans of that show and that season. Um, so yeah, people stop and say hi for that. And um, I guess, um, yeah, people who have been following like what's been happening for season two of Bridgerton now and then will say hello. I guess one pinch me moment actually was when Mindy Kaling messaged me because I'm a super hardcore fan of hers. I grew up looking up to her and her work um, and still do. So that was a bit of a pinch me moment because I never really thought I would ever interact with Mindy. She just said congratulations and was just really lovely. Yeah, she was just really sweet. It sounds really cheesy, but I'm really trying to just like focus on the work and you know, it's a, such an established show in the sense it was hugely successful and coming in on season two, I really just wanted to like bring some cars to the table and, um, you know, be good at my job for one. Um, so I guess I've been trying to focus on that, but there are pinch me moments, yeah.